In this section, we are going to begin preparing our functional budget. Now we've said, for most companies, the principal budget factor will be sales demand. And we will always start with the budget which contains the principal budget factor. So we're going to begin then with our sales budget. We want to work out, given our sales demand for each of our products, how much sales revenue do we expect to earn in the period. So we have an exercise then. We're told that Dahlia Limited makes three products, Colorette, Pom Pom and Cacti. And we have the budgeted sales figures for each of those products along with their respective selling prices. And we need to calculate the sales budget. Well, okay, this should be quite straightforward. We know what our sales budget are, is for each product. This information would usually be provided by the marketing department within an organization. So we'll go to prepare our sales budget then. So preparing our sales budget, we want to look at each of our products, and there are three, the Colorette, Pom Pom, and the Cacti. We've been given the budgeted number of sales units for each of these products. We expect to sell 2,000 units of Colorette, 4,000 units of Pom Pom, and 3,000 units of Cacti. In addition, we've been told that the expected selling price for each of these products is £100 for Colorette, £130 for Pom Pom, and £150 for Cacti. So calculating our budgeted sales revenue then should be quite straightforward. All we need to do is multiply the number of units we expect to sell of each product by the selling price per unit. All right then. So our budgeted sales revenue for Colorette, 2,000 multiplied by 100 pounds per unit will earn a sales revenue of 200,000 pounds. For Pom Pom, our sales revenue will be 4,000 multiplied by 130, so we should earn 520,000 pounds. And finally for Cacti, our budgeted sales revenue is 3,000 multiplied by 150, so 450,000 pounds. And that's our sales budget complete. I hope you found that quite straightforward. Now, let's think back to our functional budgets. We said we would start with our sales budget because that contains our principal budget factor. What's the next budget we want to look at? Our production budget. So now that we know how many units of our product we're planning on selling, we can consider how many units do we need to produce. So in our next exercise, we are told that in addition to the sales figures above, so the sales figures we've just looked at for each of our products, Dahlia Limited intends to have the following stocks of finished goods. So, we have our finished stock budget. Now you might think to yourself, well, if we're going to sell 2,000 units of Colorette, surely we need to produce 2,000 units of Colorette. However, we do need to consider our finished stock budget. So how many units of Colorette do we plan on having ready to sell in our warehouse at the start of the year? And perhaps we want to have a certain number of units 
left over in our warehouse at the end of the year. That will be our closing stock. Now preparing our production budget is quite straightforward. Let's have a look. Again, we want to calculate what our production budget is for each of our three products, the collarette, the pom-pom, and the cacti. We will of course start with our sales budget for each of those products. So we're going to sell 2,000 units of collarette, 4,000 units of pom-pom, and 3,000 units of cacti. Now we need to look at those opening and closing stock requirements. So, if we look back at our exercise, we have been told that at the end of the year, we want to have 600 units of collarette, 1,000 units of pom-pom, and 800 units of cacti. If we want to have those units left over in our finished stock for sale next year, then we are going to have to produce those units. So looking back at our production budget then, we need to add on our closing stock requirements. So for collarette, we're going to sell 2,000 units and we also want to have 600 completed units left over at the end of the year. So we need to add that on to our production budget. Likewise for pom-pom and cacti. So we're going to sell 4,000 units of pom-pom and we need to produce an additional thousand on top of that for our closing stock and we add on our 800 units for cacti. So that's our closing stock of finished, uh, finished goods taken care of in our production budget. What about our opening stock? Well, our opening stock is the units available for sale at the start of the period. So they have already been produced. Therefore, we can subtract these units from our production budget. So when we're preparing our production budget, we need to add on our closing stock requirements and take away our opening stock requirements. So looking at our opening stock figures, For collarette, we are going to have 500 units ready to sell at the start of the year, so we don't need to produce those. For pom-pom, our opening stock is 800 units, and for cacti, it's 700 units. So our last step then is to calculate our total production. So in the coming year then, we are going to have to produce 2,100 units of collarette, 4,200 units of pom-pom, and 3,100 units of cacti. And now we've completed our first two functional budgets, the sales budget and our production budget.